When you first got to league and you yeah. first started playing, who was the first person to bust your ass? I think it was when uh, Kobe had that 61. Ooh. And that, <laughs> you got a part of that? Man, I got most of it in the crunch, man. It was crazy. Was, I remember we started the game off and shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm coming off the bench at the time, so he killing. I'm looking. I'm looking at Dan Tony, he looking down, kind of like this. I'm like, I don't want to go to the game today. <laughs> <laughs> I slide down, he called me to go in. So when I go in, it's all good. I scored like quick 10, 12 points. He had a, he slowed down. He scored about eight women again. So I'm like, oh, that's going good. <laughs> Second half come, third quarter, same thing. He scored about another eight points, man. Fourth quarter come, dog, he just go crazy. Like the last three minutes, he just go crazy. He scored like 16, 18 straight. I'm like, this, this shit is amazing. Never stop, never sell. Talk about coming from Benton Harbor, Michigan, man. Coming up from there and coming to DePaul, man. How was that for you coming from, you know, it's still Midwest, but just right. making that transition from, from Michigan, Benton Harbor, coming up to the big city, Chi-Town. Man, it was, uh, for me, that shit was like eye-opening, you know. Uh, always been going to Chicago you know, since I was a kid, but just being there in that, in that school, you know, just seeing the different type of people, you know, uh, their backgrounds they come from and shit like that, all I seen was, People like struggling, people no money. You know, y'all know y'all from the right. South Side and East St. Louis. So, you know, uh, it's a different environment. You see how, you know, people, you know, interact with each other, interact with their families and shit like that. So it was a big eye opener from that standpoint. I dig, I dig, man. It was it was it was different for me too when I got up yeah. there. You know, it was like being exposed to that the, the college life and you know, the Money. different cultures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you know, you know, we got up there, they, they got a Pell Grant for you. Right, right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you kind of struggling in Lincoln Park. Yeah, but blow that in an hour and be struggling right again. <laughs> <laughs> Pell Grant, out of there. You took uh, the visit to uh, DePaul. What yeah. other schools you took the visit to? Man, just from Michigan State, that's it. So you went to Michigan State and DePaul. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So I, what made you just choose DePaul? Just like it was, it was just like. Man, I think I just vibe with the players that was on the team at the time. You know, it was it was a few guys from uh, New York that was there, a couple guys from Milwaukee, a couple guys from Chicago, and it, they was kind of similar to me, same or similar background. You know, we just had fun when I was up there, and I was like, man, I like these guys. Man, yeah. we'll go here, and then you know, Chicago, you know, right up the street. So I'm like, I will go here. I'm yeah. cool. Did you know the history, any history before you, you got there? Yeah, facts. My, I had a guy from my neighborhood actually that played with Q, you know what I'm saying? So um, I knew from that and then just being, you know, like right up the street, you know, having WGN. So, you know, they used to yeah. play on WGN. So, you know, I know Mark Aguirre and all that, uh, yeah. Terry Cummins. You know, so I know the history real well. Straight up, straight yeah. up. Fast forward, so how how did you feel like, you know what I'm saying? I remember when you announced, when yeah. you announced you was leaving school yeah. and it was like he going to the NBA and it was like, people was like, what? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, it, was kinda, it was kinda like, is he gonna get picked? Like yeah. I remember I remember Jeannie hitting me like, yeah. uh, cause I was trying to figure out like, yo, is, yeah. what's going on? And they was like, man, some people, you know, you know how you hear what's going yeah. on. They're like, he got game, but he's straight. Yeah. And so I'm like, as far as the NBA, is he gonna get, you know, picked right. or whatever? They was like, I don't know. So how did how did what what made you say you know nah I'm good I'm like because you know the the chatter be out there like right. you can see basically what's going on what yeah. made you confident that you I'm gonna get up out of here I mean to be honest I wasn't even confident because I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't on draft board first or second right round, but I was in class one day after we finished and I was just sitting there like damn man I hate this shit <laughs> <laughs> that's real though and you know how them days you be irritated motherfuckers talking to you and shit. Like, man, I don't want to hear this shit. So the teacher was talking. I'm looking at my homeboy from walking. I'm like, man, I just stood up. He's like, what you doing? I'm like, man, I quit, man. I'm about to go home. He's like, go home? I'm like, yeah. He's like, to the dorm room? I'm like, nah, I'm going to go to the crib. He's like, to Michigan? I'm like, man, I'm going to go to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I left. I packed my bags. My homeboy came and picked me up. I was just sitting in the crib for about a month before I decided what I was going to do. We was just sitting there. He had a TV. Well, they had it. was my two homeboys. They had a TV and a bean bag. <laughs> We were sitting there drinking, playing Xbox every day, messing with a couple of chicks. I'm like, that man, I'm about to. Priceless. I'm, like, I'm not going back to school, though. I can't, I can't handle this school. So I hit my AU coach. He was an agent at the time. I'm like, I want to just put my name in the draft and see what happened. He was like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Everybody <laughs> like, you like, you stupid, you crazy. You ain't even on the draft board. You go yeah. back, you'll be a first round pick for sure. I'm like, nah, I can't. I ain't even going to make it. I ain't right. going to make it through the school year. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to take my chance right here. That's mm. crazy. That's that's a that's a yeah. that's a that's a crazy story right there. So then so then how was the how was the you know going through the through the pre draft process for you? Because I remember at some yeah. point like you only did how many workouts? I only did one. 
I, I fucked what? my, you I fucked my ankle up. What? Who was the oh, one workout for though? The Knicks. Exactly. The Knicks. Exactly. Yeah. Straight up. That's dope. And yeah. then that's who picked him. He did yeah. one workout. And how was that? How did that go for you? The first one was real good. Then then they, they called me in for another workout right before the draft. I'm like, oh my God, they ain't gonna pick me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you ain't do so good, I'm nah, saying. Nah, so I'm working out with uh I forgot the kid name, but he ended up getting drafted by the podcast. He killed me the whole workout and I'm tired. I'm like, damn, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> But nah, they ended up picking me, so it was all good. So when you first got to the league, how like how how was that? Like was that like, all right, like you get drafted? Like yeah. talk about that? Like going from after that draft, like you was like after the workout, you yeah. like I ain't gonna get picked. It's yeah. over with. Then yeah. you get picked higher than anybody could have ever imagined. Right, exactly. And everybody looking like yeah. what? How? Exactly. Like what was your what was your reaction to that? My first thing was like, damn, I hope I don't get booed at the guard. They boo everybody that come. <laughs> right. So, but I played in the Big East though, so I guess that was cool enough for them. So I ain't get booed actually. So that was cool. But then my second thought, I'm like, damn, I gotta go back to the hood. They got to throw a party. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's right. <laughs> no, that's right. So first I went, thing on your mind. Yeah, yeah, facts. So I went home. We threw a party. Me and my homeboys chilled at my grandma's house after that. But after that, it's like I came. Steph, Steph called me. Actually, he's like, man, everybody got a report. I want everybody to report early. I guess he was trying to be on his super vet shit. So, <laughs> so I went back. I went. <laughs> I went early. You know what I mean? It's just being around. Actually, like. Being around Allen Houston too was cool because I liked him yeah, growing Alan, up. Yeah. Cool. And he was trying to make his comeback then, so yeah. that was probably my first. When I first met him, like damn, Allen Houston, it's crazy. Everybody. Yeah, it's crazy. Did everybody come? You know, so like I said, you had you, had fucking Jamal Crawford, Steph, Malik Rose, like all dudes I you know what I'm saying seen <laughs> growing up. So then I met Nate. I'm like, dog, I hate, I hate this dude. <laughs> Man, it, so irritating at the time, but he ended up being like my best friend though. But when I first met him, I'm like, I can't take this, man. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up being real cool though, man. That's my guy, man. Yeah, I love man. him. I, I like Nate. Yeah. Nate. Nate told us some crazy stories. This is a story about Allen Houston since yeah. you brought Allen Houston up. The first time me and Q played Allen Houston, we down there looking at him work out like yeah. before the games and he ain't missing. I'm talking about everything, his, his form, everything right. just looks so good. Then we look at his shoes. Ooh. His shoes said H two O. Right. He thought that was the dopest shit yeah. ever. Nah, like, he got I'm one of the about, underrated like, nicknames. I'm telling oh, you, man, ever, ever. Oh, we, his shoes said H two O, and then we looking at this boy just not miss nothing. Nah. We're like, ooh, yeah. this boy cold. <laughs> this boy right. cold. I definitely had jumpers. Uh, the game he had fifty in L A. Yeah, remember that game? Yeah, we used to have to play against some of them yeah. veterans. It was him and Spreewell on the same team when we was playing against. Oh them. yeah, that was the real Knicks team right when there. We first got to the league, Whoa. bro. We had some of the some of the craziest, like like how you talk about yeah. Nate, like right. Just think about some of the things that happened, like that yeah. right there that first year. Like this is his first year coming in. So how how like let like. Like how are you looking at this? Like right. now you got Nate running around. He putting X lax and Eddie cereal right. on the plane. Remember that? Yeah. No, like ECS it was my just, man too. ECS ECS, my of God. course, yeah. EC. But like it was, it was, it was unlimited. Yeah. Like just wild stuff going on for you to be a rook. You looking like like I remember trying to get you to come yeah. out to dinner and stuff. Yeah, was, my, yeah, man. my man, my <laughs> man. And you in the big yeah. city? I know you've been the country yeah, when I first boy. Got, when the I big first city. got to New York, I'm like, man, I can't, man. I don't know. I it's can't deal with this. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. yeah, that's how I was with LA. When yeah. I got to LA, I was like, man, there's too many people moving around. Like, it'd be quiet on Sundays. Right. Don't nobody be outside. Folks might go to church and they're in the house yeah. cooking or something. Exactly. In LA, it's like everybody moving 24 yeah, hours a, a day. Sunday. I ain't know, like, man. Country boy, I ain't know what was going yeah. on. Like, this too big for yeah, me. It's there's a lot of shit much. going on in New York. So I know you going to New York. Yeah, that shit was. Overwhelming. Then we got Zebo on draft night. He was on his shit. <laughs> then the team was going through the whole controversy with the uh, yeah with the, with uh, the rape or whatever sexual assault shit. I don't know whatever happened with that. Yeah, it was, it was just so much shit going on at the town. I first got there, I'm like, damn, a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah. Like for real, from day to day, it was yeah. like you know with the newspapers, the media. It was just yeah. like I, I was what I was saying like for a young fella, it's like yo. This is the league? This is the right. league. Yeah. Like, this is like, so So you go from there, how do you, like, you know what I'm saying, like, cause I feel like your evolution is crazy. From yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying, when you first came in, like, I mean, your, your, to me, your temperament is you kind of more to yourself quiet, yeah. but like, psh, you light years from where you were. You oh, yeah, wait, like, yeah. bruh, come yeah. to the table, have his phone, 
hit you one of them, and then you might not hear two words from the rest right. of dinner, bro. Like he chilling, yeah. like. And that was like I remember that was a task. Getting you remember getting you to yeah. start coming out, bro. Yeah. Hit the West Side Highway, grab some Mickey D's, and beat to the be, yeah. be up be up White up Castle, up top. Yeah. <laughs> White, White Castle, Castle. <laughs> one of them, and he yeah. up top chilling. Facts, yeah, nah, man. I think the best thing for me was coming out in New York. Once I did that, like I got around the city, I started popping up everywhere, Brooklyn, Queens, Harlem, yeah. I'm yeah. everywhere. Yeah, he I ended up loving it and I go there every like every off day I'm there now taking a train up to New York. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my spot. Feeling the city, yeah. feeling the love, yeah. man. Yeah. So how did you get into the vegan stuff? Man. Like how did that come about? Like, cause I remember you think back. <coughs> remember we came, this is when I was with the Pistons. We came through Denver, I came through the apartment yeah. and kicked it with yeah. you. And he had all kind of so I'm looking like, man, this boy got <laughs> like, what you got going on up in here? We're yeah, like tripping, yeah. I'm there riding bikes to and from practice and yeah. stuff. He got like he got all type of extra like yeah. you start taking like your body like crazy serious. Yeah. Like what made you start doing that and like changing your habits and stuff? I think when I left New York and I went to Denver and I started having all the injuries and shit, trying to figure out, I'm like, damn, working hard, taking care of my body, I don't know what's going on. So I was talking to this one lady and she was like, man, you should try uh, being vegan, you know what I'm saying? It's good, like with inflammation in your body and recovery and shit. So I tried it out. And that two years, I had, hit, I had just had hip surgery. Right, I remember that. And I was out for the season, so I started like right around that time. And then I came back, that's like I hit the ground running, like I never had the surgery, I had one of my best years. So I was like, man, I'm gonna keep doing it. But man, that shit's just so hard to do. I did it for two years, shit's just so hard to do consistently. <laughs> While you playing, traveling, the team gotta get you special meals. Then when you land, you gotta go find something to eat. It's, it might be one in the morning. You know, ain't no vegan spots open one in the morning. Yeah, I ain't cooking. So what uh. you? That's what I'm saying. Like, so, so like, what is like, what is? How do you like? What does a meal plan for you look like? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you like a regular week or day for you? How does that go? Shit, I was actually rehabbing out here in LA, so you know, out here it's easy yeah, to get vegan spots. Everywhere yeah. you go is vegan spots, so it was easy when I was here and in Denver too. But on the road, I had to find like, uh, actually, uh, was it Peter or whatever? They had, we had gotten to a little big thing. Well, they got into a big thing, rather. I was fishing, and they got like a million some hits on ESPN. I had caught a big ass fish in, uh, in Florida. <laughs> I seen a 300 pound yeah, grouper or yeah, something group, like that. Yeah, yeah. so you know, they had hit me like, oh, I thought you was big. And I'm like, I ain't eating, I just I like to go fish, you know? <laughs> I like the fish, you know. You caught a three hundred pound yeah. fish. Yeah. So, so they was they was going crazy on me. So I'm like, man, I just met I just met with them. So you know, see, it was good. And they they told me about this app called Happy Cow. So every city you go to is pretty much you know, they got to show all the vegan spots in every city. So that was like my thing. Oh, that's right. what's yeah. up, man. I want to ask you this. I know you've been to a few teams. How yeah. you and you had injuries? I know how hard it is to just continue yeah. with the injuries and. Man, you be down to yourself like, man, I can't yeah. get back, especially being out for a whole season. Nah, facts. I, I felt that when you did the uh, the player trip in your article, that was the best. I told uh, Chris that was the best one I read, you know what I'm saying? Just y'all yeah. too, you know what I'm saying? You could relate more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then having the injuries and shit, I know you had the injuries and you yeah. was out and you said you was at the crib, just like, damn. Like, I felt like that too. I went out the league, but I'm at the crib for the whole year. Yeah. You ain't hooping, so people ain't really checking for you. And I'm in Denver yeah. at that. And coming to them like they was coming to New York. Yeah. So I'm at the crib, like, damn. So I'm just like trying to find shit to pass time. I started reading books. I ain't never read books. Yeah. I'm reading books just like trying to soak up knowledge, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Doing other shit, keep my mind off of it. Yeah. But that was the toughest shit. It was plenty of times. I had two hip surgeries yeah. both times. Like, damn, I don't even know. Like when you first come back, you ain't moving the same. You hurting every day. I'm like, yeah, I might be done. Time, it might be over. Right. Right. Yeah. Then like the first one, I had my first uh, surgery. Like that's when I was still younger. So I'm like, damn, I ain't even made that much bread. I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah. yeah contracts, so, contract time yeah. come up. You want to perform yeah, and yeah. you want to show that you worked everything. And then yeah, but, pressure just be up on you. Yeah, pressure. That shit and tough. It's hard for you to kind of fight that off. Yeah, you know? and then you know, like being in your situation, you the only person in your family kind of doing that. So people don't really understand. Like you playing ball, you should be happy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like right. that's the everybody thing. Like you, I wish I was doing that. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be where I'm at? Yeah, yeah. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> I was straight. That's, yeah, that's, that's so, what's up. Yeah, that's I think that though, like you started, so you started reading books. You got into art. Like I was like, yeah. cause I remember like, man, bro, like bro didn't grew. Yeah, no, like facts. you know what I'm saying. He didn't, he didn't super grew. Like yeah, I, just from your whole Instagram, then coming and chilling with you, vibing with you. I was like, okay, I'm like Wilson, and you know what I'm saying. He didn't kind of yeah spread out a little bit. Yeah, you know you gotta find yourself and shit. Ain't no better way than going to a slower pace city like Denver, coming from New York, the, the injuries and shit. Mm -hmm. You ain't got no other choice but to find yourself. 
yourself and see what you like and try to figure that out. But being in the NBA, you get to see the world. Yeah. You get to see cultures. Right. You know where we from, you kind of, you gotta gotta be hard or you gotta they be got tough to. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Or you can't like art. Or yeah. you can't like going to the baller, uh, going to right. the ballet or yeah. just do certain stuff. And when you get kids, it kind of soften you up a little yeah. bit more even. Yeah. Just tell what your experience from coming from some place like that and then get to see the world and be like, man, it's right. beautiful everywhere. Man, that shit is weird because when you first start doing little shit, even when bro was like, man, let's go. The, I mean, the first time I hung out when we went to the club, I'm like, man, I ain't never seen no shit like that. I'm like, this shit, <laughs> this shit too weird. I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know. I ain't really, overwhelming. I, yeah, it's overwhelming. Like, I ain't feeling this. And I'm like, man, these motherfuckers, everybody talking and just hugged. I'm like, nah, I'm straight. But just like, but when the question you asked, just traveling, like seeing like different shit, I'm like, man, this shit actually ain't bad. Like, you know, you start to get into different things. So I remember when I, when I first went home, like, I started making my homeboys do all different types of shit. Like, man, I don't want to do this, but after a while, niggas be loving it. And, like, go go to the movies, watch Harry Potter, go to a Broadway show, go here, go travel here, take your friends like that. Yeah. When you on the trip, man, make them try new food, shit yeah. like that. And these niggas has been locked up, just came home, or yeah. whatever, uh, selling dope, you know what I'm saying? It's from the crib, from West Side Chicago, I like, got yeah. with me, like, so it's like, you kind of helping, like, you know what I'm saying, broaden their horizons, they take that back to their kids, you know what I'm yeah. saying, shit like that, so. Showing them something different. Yeah, showing something different. Some people soak it up, some people some don't. Some, some people go right done. back to what they was doing, but you know what I'm saying, I think it's good, you know what I mean? Like I said, I at least gave them something, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, you paying it for it. Yeah. Yeah, trying to show them something. How, how, was it, how was it for you when you went over to China? Uh, man, that shit was a whole, like, different experience, because our nice and they nice is two different things, like, that's probably the one time I was like, the first time I was like, damn, like it's a blessing just to be like, with all the shit going on over here in America, just being over there in the communist country, like they can't, they can't control, like they can't get on certain websites, Instagram, social media, YouTube, and shit really? like that. That's like a crime over there. Like you got to have a, you got to have a special like, wow. um, I forgot what you call it, like a special little thing to get on it, so they can like uh, block it out, so you can get on YouTube and Instagram and shit like that, and just like, just the whole like from food to whatever it is, like, when I was there, like, they really do, like, fuck with dogs and all that shit, but, <laughs> I mean, they don't, like, trick you, like, they're like, this is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Have you tried it? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Have you tried it? So nah, what you nah. eating over there, like, what? You... I was eating, like, you know, what we eat over here, like, beef and broccoli, you know okay. what I'm saying, and the duck, and shit like that, like, okay. so they made sure, I, and I was at the JW, so they had American uh, breakfast okay. and brunch and shit like that, yeah, and, uh, okay. lunch, but, like, when I go to the, uh, the Chinese restaurants, I you know I eat like just the the normal shit. I, I wouldn't try nothing crazy over there. Yeah. And Steph actually, when he was you know he was over there and I got there, so he put me onto a Italian restaurant that was over there that was pretty good. So I was good. I was in a decent city, and I was like an hour away from Shanghai. I was going there on my days off, so I was just really just chilling. You know, straight up. That's yeah. what's up. I know that was a crazy experience. Yeah. Once I figured like my way around, like I was good. Like the first month, I'm like, man, I can't do it. <laughs> but like after I figured my way around. Then Shanghai got everything like that's Americanized, so I'm at Morton, so I'm going here, going there. Yeah, they had an M2, you remember M2? They had an right. M2 over there, yeah. so that's I'm in the club up. a little bit. Yeah, you know that's what what's mean? up. <laughs> yeah. So it was solid. I had my homeboy with me, little Larry, so he, he was good. How long you was over there? I went over there, like they, they paid me extra to go early, so I was over there like seven months almost. Mm, okay. I was over there a minute. That was, doing, that was doing the lockout, right? They were doing the lockout, then they they lifted the lockout, and I had to stay. You know, they made it. They made everybody I stay that. over I there. That. King left, and everybody had to stay. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Kmart got out of there yeah, first. Facts. I was surprised he even came in the first place. I was too, to be honest. Yeah. I was surprised. I mean, that whole that whole time was real was weird. You yeah, know it was weird. Yeah. It was a lot of you know what I'm saying. People but he was not the only one at the time. He was the only super vet. You know, everybody else was like me, Jr., Aaron Brooks, shit like that, Gerald Green. Yeah, I was surprised when he said he was coming. And the city he went to was trash. <laughs> <laughs> he was over there, it's like you know, there was no time difference over there, so. If you're on one side, it's the same time. So we flew over there. We land like around three or four. So I already pitched dark. I'm like, oh my god, it's yeah. terrible. I said it's, it's close to Afghanistan. So it's like when you watch the old kung fu movies and shit with the dudes with the beards <laughs> and shit, look like that. Just from the beginning, you know, like compare compare yourself like the Wilson that came into the league, the young Wilson that was, you know, yeah. kind of in your own zone. You didn't really do too much. You right. was like, you know, you was cautious of people and right. stuff like that. To now. 
to where you, you know, you got all these different worldly experiences, yeah. you into different things that you probably growing up never thought right. coming from Benton Harbor, exactly. like I'm gonna be doing A, B, and C at this point when I get this old. So, so how did you get from point A to point B? Man, I think just over time, just meeting new people, like um, I met so many people when I played with the Knicks and from traveling, you know what I'm saying, hooping and all that, I think just trying different stuff. Like if I'm in a new city, just trying different food. Or if I get invited here, just, you know what I'm saying, take the time just to go and, you know what I'm saying, learn it or experience. You know, the first time I went to an orchestra, I was invited. And I was like, and I think they was playing like Beethoven or whatever. I never, and I knew, <laughs> right. you know, I heard Beethoven before, like the name, but I never really knew what it was. I don't know if it was a, a guy or a group, you know what I'm saying, I never knew. And the orchestra, they was playing Beethoven. I'm like, this ain't bad. Like, you know what I'm saying, I just look around the room and just, I can see how they get the vibe, like how we listen to like your favorite rapper, your favorite song, or, mm-hmm. you know, artist. And, they, they had that same type of vibe, you know and they probably weren't dancing, like we dance and bob in the head, but they, they had a vibe, they was enjoying it. I'm like, this, this ain't bad, you know what I'm saying? So I started like going to different shows. I just went to one a couple weeks ago, and, um, and I went to a guy, I forget his name, but he did like the soundtrack, like the the music for like uh, the end, in, in movie music for like Star Wars, and Indiana okay. Jones and mm-hmm. shit. And he had a show in Chicago, matter of fact, and I had my, my homeboy from out west on the west side of Chicago, you know what I'm saying? It was on, you know, on that tip. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, he ain't never, he's like 40, he ain't never been. I'm like, man, go to this with me. He's like, for what? I'm like, man, you would like it, I'm telling you, just go. And he had a great time, you know what I'm saying? Mm, that's cool. And it was good for him too, because his son had just got killed, you know what I'm saying, drive by a few weeks before that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it was something that he could do to get his mind off that, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. What? Let me talk about this. Uh, you know, you being from a small town, yeah. and uh, you know, you go back and you see people that, that haven't traveled far. Like where yeah. I'm from, the farthest people has been is Chicago and Memphis, which right. is like four hours away. Yeah, Memphis down to the same. It's yeah, so, same so when, you, <laughs> when you go back home and just the way, you know, yeah. people ain't seen the world how you seen the yeah. world, and like you experience it more, like you say, foods and right. scenery and everything, yeah. and you go back home and you hear them people that you be like, man, y'all still think that way because y'all ain't seen nothing. Yeah, it's crazy, you know what I mean? I used to think, like, when people used to tell me, I was like, man, they ain't looking down on me, like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But I ain't realized, like, people just trying to, like, broaden, broaden my horizon and yeah. just get me into different shit. And when I be sitting at my grandma's house and we be sitting on the porch and I be hearing some of my family and my homeboys, I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Cause they don't know like, no we ain't better. really got no, nothing in common no more, but it's like they don't even know no better, like, yeah. they just, yeah. Speaking on what they know and what they seen, cause they ain't been nowhere. They you know ain't what been saying? nowhere. They ain't seen. nothing, and it ain't even. Sometimes it ain't even they fault though, cause you got people. It's like half and half. You got people that just don't want to do nothing else, but then you got people who don't even know how to if they wanted yeah. to. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Cause ain't no resources. You know what I'm saying? They they ain't got they ain't got no money yeah. to even experience nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The only thing they can experience is like social media. Yeah. And you know on social media they just pumping a certain shit. Yeah. Like they only gonna show you so much. And same with reality TV. So. All they see is like certain shit, so they ain't even got no outlet to even think different or do different. You know, us coming to LA, it was my first time ever being to LA. Yeah. We came to LA and uh, Cheesecake Factory was right by my by our house where yeah. we was at. So my first time ever being in Cheesecake Factory, and like you say, you don't know no better, yeah. so for a phone. So Q was in there, he'd been to Cheesecake before, he was like, yeah, I'm finna get some spinach artichoke dip. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm you like, him like I'm is. like, spinach? <laughs> You see the menu, you gonna order spinach? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. it, just, it just threw yeah. me off. I'm nah, like, nah, nah. I'm gonna, <laughs> let me get them popcorn shrimp, yeah. like, let me get some fettuccine Alfredo, you know what I'm saying? So Q <laughs> ordered, he was like, man, just try it. So I tried it, I'm talking about for at least a decade straight every time I went to Cheesecake Factory. You gotta get First that, thing right? I was ordering was yeah. spinach artichoke dip. Yeah. You know, just yeah. broaden my taste buds yeah. and stuff like that. And you know, people from where I'm from, they don't know. Yeah, it, it be that. the simple things, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> you. I'm telling my homeboy, boy, if I take you overseas, you ain't gonna eat nothing. Right, yeah, nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> you ain't gonna eat nothing. nothing. That's hilarious. Man. Yeah, it be like that though. I don't even know. Uh, Q remember me? And I brought my homeboy CC out to uh, New York one time. We had went out to eat. Me, you, him, and Rio. And he ain't really know the menu. He just looking at it. I can, I can tell. I can look at his face. He don't even know what to order. So everybody ordering drinks and shit. So he like, I'm had. He told the waiter, I'm had this one. That's what you say. You don't know the name. Like, I'm had this one. So they brought it out. It was like a girl drink. Yeah, like, it was all fruity looking and shit. 
<laughs> they looking like, damn, I thought you was from the hood. <laughs> <laughs> so when you was coming up, who did you like patting your game after? Like somebody that you was watching or somebody with moves or something, you was like, man, that. Man, my whole, my, I got a love, hate thing with hoop. Like it's crazy because I watch certain players, but I'd be out. My grandma, she that's who really loved ball. My yeah. grandma loved the Bulls, so she watched basketball faithfully. Yeah. So now I come home, she already already, already watching got the basketball. Game on. Uh-huh. Like even to this day, she know all the stats, of all the players. When I call her, <laughs> yeah. that's all she talk about is basketball. Sometimes when I be at the crib, I be having to act like I'm asleep. Yeah. Like, I don't even want to answer that, all these questions. That's that WGN. Yeah. That's yeah. The WGN. Oh, no, that's yeah. They playing she, tomorrow. She know all. You can ask about Jimmy Butler. She don't know everything. Yeah. NBA, it could be. Uh, LeBron, she gonna know who hurt. She gonna know. So <laughs> yeah. when I was growing up, she she loved hoops, so she loved Jordan. So when I come home, she already watching the game. That's how I got into the game. I'd be outside playing ball, but I'd never really be in the crib watching it that yeah. much like that. So I just was kind of like hooping, and I kind of I was a late bloomer. So like I never like patting my game. Like I like players, but I never was like trying to be like a player. And yeah, like, I was just take, outside hooping like a motherfucker. I try to take something from. Him, yeah, like. yeah. I ain't do that until I got older. Yeah. yeah. So who, when, when you got older, who was who was the person you was like, man, I got, I'm, I, I see something in him that I can see him. I see him myself. That man, I, I, I ain't gonna most, front. It's it's the most uncommon thing. But I like Jamal Mashburn. He, I thought he was so what? cold for whatever reason. I just Monster thought he was man. He was what? cold, but I just thought he was better than everybody. I'm like, I love Monster Mashburn. Jamal Mashburn. He still yeah. he wasn't athletic or nothing like that yeah. no more. And was you, I'm talking about one game busting my ass. <laughs> nah, like, nah, the dog was cold. Yeah. Work. Like, yeah. Jamal Mansburg, one of my favorite players, too, yeah. coming up. I watched his career coming up. Like, he was a dog, yeah, dog. Nah, and if he went and got hurt, like, later on, where he still could have kept some a little bit of that athletic ability, man, he would have been yeah. <laughs> killing even more. Yeah, nah, I liked him a lot. I liked G Hill. Yeah. It was so many. Like, but them two probably was the, was it. And then like Scotty, cause like yeah. I play both sides, you both know, play defense, play offense. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he was kind of like, yeah, that's one thing I, I really liked about your game yeah. off the rip. I seen how you play defense and yeah. offense. Yeah. Like you compete on both sides of the ball. A lot of people don't do that. Yeah. I was the player like that. My defense was way ahead of this time before I nah, that's my a, that's offense a big caught up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was 18 years old, coming straight out of high school, and I was guarding the best player. They bring right. me off the bench to guard. The man, Kobe's, man, the, the Garnets, yeah. the, and I'm 18 straight out of high school. Right. So for that, that's like a big achievement. Yeah. That made me feel like I was like validated. Yeah, nah, facts. And then, like you said, before your time to go from Kobe to Garnett, like, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. So. So you played both basically in both generations. Before it was this whole yeah. three pointer, yeah. like you know. Five man, then four out guys. Like you, basically a four man now. You, yeah, you, you play three and four, but you, I seen you play a lot of four. You yeah. know, what I'm saying the last few years. So, how do you feel? Like you know, what I'm saying that the, the game is changed, and like as far as though you know, they taking the, the the you know all of the rules are going against the defenders and yeah. stuff like that. What do you feel about just playing? You playing in both climates. Like yeah. went from where. It was kind of like, you don't really shoot threes. Now it's like, shoot yeah. all the threes you want to shoot. That's the best thing right. ever. It was crazy before. I, I never really shot threes. When, right. I, when I first got in the league, you know, like Zeke was old school. So we had Zebo at the power forward and Eddie mm-hmm. at the five. So it was like more traditional, you know right. what I mean? Then the next year, we, they, they fired Zeke. We got Dan Tony. He had, used to take me out of the game for not shooting threes. Like, you got to shoot it. <laughs> and that's how, that's really how I started shooting threes like that. But to answer your question, I think, I, I like the that. The evolution of the game, just from a fan standpoint, it's you know it's exciting to watch. You know you right. watch a Steph who really ain't he ain't a D Miles, he ain't LeBron, he, he look like a regular dude walking down the street. If you ain't know that was Steph, you wouldn't even think maybe right. he was a hooper. You know what right. I'm saying? But to see him go out there mm-hmm. and score forty, shoot from half down to half court, that right. shit's amazing. He he more like relatable to the average NBA fan than a mm-hmm. LeBron or a Vince Carter. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm right. saying? A guy who play above the rim. So I like like I love it from that standpoint. But just the defensively, it's tough. You know, you got to guard it like him or Katie, and you can't really touch him or like at all. You see James going to the rims, like he hits you first. And I like it. I mean, for him, you know what I'm saying? It's good for him the way he uses it, but he hits you first, and then you get up on him, and they call a foul for the, the slightest touch. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? That's, like, that's, that's tough for anybody, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're a defender, like that's how you make your money. Yeah, that's how you make your money. Yeah. And so right now, with, with Harden doing what he doing, <laughs> That shit is amazing. Too. I tell people all the time, they, you know, that's like the hottest conversation right now. Like, <laughs> right. how would you guard him? What would you do? I say, first, I'm going to foul him. Right. Real good and hard. And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. you know, because clearly, yeah. 
All of the defensive schemes, all of the patterns, whatever people been doing, it ain't been working. But shit, you now if you follow them hard, right, then it might get kicked out the game. I might have <laughs> to. I might have to do that though. Yeah. Like I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to give them yeah. one to really like. Yeah. You're not about to really just. He be embarrassing these people. Ba 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 ba. Step back. Then they letting them travel. Now he could do a double step back. This illegal and he's still <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like I'm. Yeah. You didn't see me do it. Right. I'ma have to give you one. I'ma <laughs> right. have to, and then let them know, yeah, I'ma be here all night, just like you going right. for 50. I'ma have to use all six of these real yeah. hard on you. And hope that like, at some point he like, all right, I don't want him to hit me no more, I'ma chill. Right. Like hopefully, I'ma pray on that because all of the schemes and everything, it ain't really nothing. Nah, it ain't working. We played them the other day, we won, but we we literally did everything you do. We denied on the ball. Shadow him. Shadow him. Press him full court, put different the defenders on. It was crazy. He still had 37, but it was the way he got his 37, though. It was tough. Y'all you know made, it tough it made it tough for him. Brew was in his yeah. back pocket. And that's pocket. all you can ask for to get a win like yeah. that. Because in this league, man, people are so good, you can't stop them. That's what I'm saying. It's hard to be yeah. with the new rules as a defender, to be a one on one defender. You yeah. can't. You got to have a good defensive team. You got to have people behind you. That's you know why I like what Corey Brew was doing. Like, I be seeing other teams just let him take the ball out and dribble down court. And I'm like, yeah. nah, I'm finna let him use every inch of energy he got in yeah. his body. Yeah. You finna yeah. spin move me all the way down. <laughs> I'm finna. And you got to make him play uh, deep. Yeah, I'm finna try to give hide him so, on Yeah, defense, I'm finna so give you so much deep. where you're going to have to use so much energy yeah. just to slow you down yeah, a little like, bit. Yeah. To get you to slow down on trying to get on offense where you got to catch a breath to pass it off. Yeah, I'm I'm going to be, like, I've been watching. I'm like, damn, I want to see how he's going to be by the time the playoffs come. Like, right. he's going to yeah. be out of, like, and, juice. And that's what, what I saying? that's why I think. I'm glad Chris Paul coming back, so yeah. they might be doing good. Yeah, nah, they should be straight with Chris Paul. I mean, you really, so you could argue if he didn't get hurt last year, they, they might be in the finals, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I mean, for me, that's that's the only thing he, he got left. Like, because, you know, last year he stepped up. He, he did, but, like, to me, I want to see him go crazy in the playoffs. Yeah. That's the only thing he has done to me. Like, it's because yeah. early in the career, he was missing in OKC yeah. when they got to the finals. And then the other series, you know, it's been questions. But like last year, I felt like he was there. I felt like he was he yeah. was hooping. But like, I want to see him go, like how he going bananas yeah. right now. Like nobody, I want to see him do this in the playoffs. Because nobody still can't guard you. I know it's, yeah, it's I, different, but still. Yeah, I think Chris Paul being there help a lot. I think. It's not. It's nothing with his game. I think he just be so tired by the time the playoffs come because his usage rate is so high. Everything. He do everything. Yeah. You know, he's the point guard. You For know, them he's, to he's win, getting all though. the buckets. Yeah, you gotta win. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta do it. But you play yeah. the game the right way yeah. all the time. Yeah. You don't overshoot the ball. You don't yeah. even the games that you have good games. Yeah. Your your field goal percentage be high. Yeah. You will go like ten for thirteen or something yeah. like that and have like twenty six or yeah. something like that. So like that's how I used to play the the game. I never just overshot the ball. Yeah, I think. Like now, like with social media and shit like that, if you play a game and you two for three, four for five, they like, damn, what's going on? Like, I might have a game where I got 20, next game I might have like five, but like you get on social media, like, oh man, you trash, you terrible, you ain't playing. I'm like, damn, we won. Uh, I had five, I'm like, you want me to do that? But there's the people that don't yeah. see the little thing. Exactly. What you yeah. do, exactly. like, don't know the real value. You right. might have swung three times to get to that person to shoot the rock. You exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of little details in the stuff that people just don't appreciate that really yeah. don't know the game. Like nah, that. Fact, social media made the world smaller. It made like, people <laughs> attention span shorter, like, and then everybody a professional. You get everybody on there, like, popular. yeah, like you got all these people, like yeah. with basketball now, you got everybody running basketball in the media, like yeah. that never, like never was good or never played. It got an opinion. Yeah. You got people with analytics that brought that to the game now, like, like a big high school. Yeah, yeah. like that's what I'm saying. I hate high school. I hate analytics. <laughs> you can just like you can manipulate the numbers to make it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he shoots sixty percent when he's going right. He only shoot fifty eight percent when he's going I'm left. Sad. Like, dog, I'm that, still that, unsure that really about this like, whole plus yeah, minus yeah, thing. Like, like, it's what, like what dudes that, that never played. I'm like, this fucking guy never played far. Then <laughs> yeah. you got but nobody got coaches seen. who wasn't players. Like, I don't know. It's just like. Yeah, it's the game of basketball just different. I look at it from that standpoint, like, damn, like it's really people in the game running the game. And I they know, don't know the game. I know you play for a lot of coaches. I play yeah. for a lot of coaches, and it's hard to get a rhythm with a lot of coaches. Some yeah, coaches some, come, they just really don't believe in you, and some coaches right, yeah. be like they believe in you, and it's hard to catch that rhythm with coaches. Yeah, like, I, like, yeah I think I've been pretty like blessed as far as like having coaches that, that like me, and I you know I, mean? I went from. Isaiah, who drafted me, and he had a lot of vests then, so I ain't play much. But I had Dan Tony, where I kind of that's, that's like my start and my best years I had with him. Then I went straight to him, from him to uh, 
to George Carl, who played kind of a similar uh, yeah. style of basketball. So it's it's more about finding my rhythm and how to play like in that system and be effective. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little different, but like. I always had good coaches. I always yeah. uh, played for guys that, that believed in me. You know George called it shoot, pass, dribble. Yeah, mm-hmm. fact. It's it's same thing shoot, with pass, dribble. <laughs> Lay up or three. Like when you first got some money, what's the biggest purchase that you bought? Where you was like, damn, I just paid that much money for that. <laughs> <laughs> we all so, got something crazy, right. bro. I ain't. That's the thing. I ain't really got nothing crazy. It's just like, man, I used to do like just silly shit. Like I. I think the silliest shit I done, like when I first got some bread, I just went to the store, like to the corner store. I had to order a whole bunch of bottles of Cristal. So I, mean, I had I had little dudes I used to make skit with me and shit. So we, I got a whole bunch of bikes from Walmart. We just riding bike through the neighborhood. We got all got a bottle of Cristal, just, ride, <laughs> just riding around on the bikes drinking Cristal. So I'm Yo, like, man, let's ride to the, I'm like, let's ride to the projects. We just ride through the projects. Uh, now this is call after it, you got drafted. Yeah, after money. I got drafted. Yeah. <laughs> so we we ride through the Highland. It's called Highland Project. We drinking Cristal. Through the Jets. Yeah, I'm like, with bikes and probably, Cristal. That's probably the silliest shit I probably just done. I probably had about 20 of them nights. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's priceless right there, dog. That, I ain't heard one like that. Straight up. I ain't definitely heard one like that. I bought my mom a, a Rolex and a Lincoln LS. I just totaled her car. Like a month before I got drafted. <laughs> yeah. I remember that Lincoln. Like I ain't even supposed to drive a car. And my homeboy calling me, and I was like, man, I'm finna just take the car, run and grab him, and just come right back to right. the crib. My mom was like going on a field trip or something. So I'm going, and I see the car kind of coming through the yeah. through the houses. So I'm driving. I'm like, man, I'm looking ahead of me. I'm like, yeah, I don't got a stop sign. I'm, I'm, I look and see his stop sign. So I'm like, I know he going to stop. <laughs> right. So, man, I keep on going, man. He like fishbone me like boom right in the middle I hopped in my homeboy lap <laughs> it's like a month before the draft like I hopped in my homeboy lap it was like slow motion like I was like a matrix I hopped in my homeboy lap man I got home and my body was so weak I just slept for like 12 hours my mom was scared as a mug she was mad too yeah. she was scared I, ca- I told her a call so soon as I got a lick of bread I got a uh, I got a what we get I think we got like eighty thousand dollars off trading cards. Mm-hmm. I went and bought my mom a link in that list and a, 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 a ten thousand dollar rolling. Yeah. Before I even bought myself anything, just yeah, let me get you this right quick. Yeah, that's <laughs> that link in list was hard. I feel bad. <laughs> I should have got my homeboy a car. I messed this car up when I was in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. So you you got any stories like that where like while you was playing before like where like you. A kicking it incident. Like I got an incident. We out in Miami kicking it on the jet ski. Yeah, and, yeah, I see that. Yeah. And you remember? But remember, Larry was there. Larry Hughes. Larry Hughes was there. Oh, okay. We out there kicking it on jet skis. I thought my life was over. Yeah, I, I thought all I saw was like a life flag. Dun, dun, dun. Richardson gets hurt on the jet ski <laughs> accident. I'm like, yeah. I got man, total the jet ski. I was like, I was, I was, I was furious, yeah. limping home. I'm just like you said, not not sure what's going on. I just went to the hotel, went to sleep. The whole trip was over for me. We had like three days left. It was it was dead for me. I was just salty, sitting in the room, yeah. not sure if I was really hurt or not. Yeah. Didn't want to say nothing to my agent. My yeah. agent right there in Miami. I ain't telling him nothing. Yeah, fact. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I'm gonna wait. I gotta be sore for a little longer before I say something to Jeff. Nah, I ain't had one of them before the league, but I had one during the league just a couple summers ago. I, the summer I was rehabbing my hip. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna take my family. I ain't never took my family you nowhere, know, like just my whole family. So it was like, me, my aunt, my uh, my nieces. Well, they really my cousins, but my uncles and aunts, I grew up with my grandma, so like mm-hmm. they my brothers and sisters. So it was my cousins, like they're younger than me. It's like four of them, my aunt, my dad, his girl, like four of my homeboys, my kids. So we went down, to, uh, we went to Cabo. We rented a house, went to Cabo. So every day we did like something different. One of the days we went zip lining. <laughs> so we zip lining. So I see uh I see bungee jumping. 
I tell my homeboy, let's go bungee jumping when we done doing the zip line. He's like, cool. Are you oh, serious, yeah. bro? You <laughs> so, with that? Yeah, so wow. uh, we walking up to the bungee jump spot where you go uh, with the catapult to take you up, and, like take you up over the canyon. Bro, you so he like, I ain't, do, he like, he like I ain't doing it. Michigan in fact. To go jump off and do a bungee jump? <laughs> right, like, nigga. what? Everybody like, you crazy. Like, <laughs> most people like, I ain't even doing it. My auntie done like, you tripping, whatever. <laughs> My homeboy like he'd do it with me, so we get over. They like, nah, I ain't doing it no more. Man. So I'm like, I'm going, I'm going ahead and do it. I ain't, I ain't never been here. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I can say I went bungee jumping. <laughs> so it's me. It's crazy. It's me and two other little kids that they ain't with me. Two uh, white kids. They they had to be like ten and like twelve to a brother and sister. So it's just me and them two and then the, the instructors and shit. So we go up on the catapult. They they both go first. I'm like, they do. I gotta do it. Oh my god. <laughs> So it was like, it was a glass bottom, so you could see out the bottom, it's high as hell. When you got up there, yeah. so the glass bottom didn't like, you Nah, it was thick, it was thick as hell. Like you, you could tell it wasn't gonna break, but they had a Velcro strip, and you supposed to stand on the Velcro strip and just jump straight out. I hoop. So I, I, get, I gathered myself, I took a step back. <laughs> instead of, so I slipped on the glass, and I fell out. I got the video on my phone, so I'll show you after it's over. I fell out, right? Come on, bruh. Come on! I had just had my history. I, I just missed the whole season. This let so you know. So when, when I fell out, it was straight. It was cool. It was like it was uncomfortable because I fell out. So I'm, <laughs> I'm dangling everywhere. I ain't even realize when I when I got so when I finished and shit. You now I was trying to act cool. They ain't even my family's wife. They ain't even know I fell out. Now I'm just trying to act cool. <laughs> I looked down at my knee and shit. My knee about this big. I bumped my knee on the metal part when I fell out. I got I still got the dent in my knee right now to this day. <laughs> Dog, my knee so big, I can't walk or nothing. So I'm limping, they like, what's wrong? Like, I think I'm sore from the zip line, right? <laughs> so I, I text Andy, they used to work for the Knicks. I text Andy right away, like, dog, I think my curl, I think I fucked my knee up. I got a big ass dent in my knee, my knee swole. I don't know what to do, I iced it. I've been wow. laying up since I got back. Two days later, whatever, it just went down. Stopped hurting, went down. Still had the dent in my knee. Went back to rehab, never, nothing never happened. Still got the dent in my knee to this day. Legs got back strong. Legs got back strong. I like, bet you crazy. ain't gonna bungee jump no nah, more. Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never do that again. fell off the thing, man, come on, That bro. shit was the scariest shit ever. I ain't even know why I fucked up my knee, cause I fell out, I'm like, damn. Your adrenaline was going yeah, too hard. Yeah, you didn't know nothing until you got down and life was okay. Yeah, yeah, like, boy, you jumping out, come like, on, man. I ain't man. never doing no shit like this. Like, man, I can hear my grandma now, like, what was you even thinking? Bro, no. you from Benton Harbor, bro. You made it out of there, and you gonna go jump off a cliff we're talking yeah. about bungee jumps? Yeah, right. Nah, man. Come on, yeah. bro. Yo, so I got a question. As far as like uh, cultural impact, who you think had the biggest cultural impact between AI and LeBron? I think. So, so we you got social that, right? media. LeBron, the height of social media yeah, right like now. At this like, age, like it, it'll it'll look like LeBron, but I don't think AI get the props for what he did. Yeah. What like how he moved. It's more. A it's. Lot. it's this day and age, I think it's hard to try and, you know, compare because it's so much more pushing everything that's out there, yeah, so much yeah. more access and, you know, you can push whatever message you're trying to do yeah. so much easier. Yeah. But like AI, like everybody didn't know that he was sending shoes to the prisons and stuff yeah. like that and looking yeah. out and he had the hood and he still got the hood locked. Yeah. Like he got hood everybody. love forever. Yeah. Like they going AI yeah. is gonna forever be the GOAT. He gonna forever yeah. get that special love that everybody can't and get. And nobody gonna talk about that. And it's yeah. because of his, you know, what he, you you, you can't, you can't replicate what he went through and yeah. you know, his yeah. trials and tribulations that made him who he was and the things that, that he stood for and that he stood against and right or wrong or whatever you wanna say, all of those things add up to what he is and the icon that he is and you can't just replicate that. Yeah, I'm gonna go AR too, cause it was, it, was, it wasn't intentional, like he was just being himself. Yeah. Like, he ain't had no machine behind him pushing like social media, pushing all these different avenues. I think and he, he was just something. being himself. It was just like natural. He was doing like, what I'm gonna, whatever I'm gonna do today, that's what I'm gonna do. Like the way he dressed, the way he, he spoke, you know, I ain't going to practice, whatever it was. I mean, it wasn't even intentional. He was just like being himself and it became like iconic. Yeah, and it's kind of like when LeBron came in, it was kind of like, at 17, he was the chosen one, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. he had to he he had to be kind of tactful and do things perfect yeah. and do yeah. things that he was, you know what I'm saying? Like he had to, he, like you said, he had a whole machine that was pushing yeah. him and he had a game plan like AI was 
had been in jail, had Bro, to get a second cut, chance, all so that stuff. stuff. So it was yeah. just like, it was up for grabs for him. Like you say, he was really just doing him. Yeah. I think Bron do a good job of making moves, like Jay-Z. Like, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He make, Bron. it's like chess moves, you know what I'm Man. saying? Man. Hey, I like Pac, you know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> emotional, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I'm just doing, I'm just living my life, you know? But a- ain't nobody gonna, when they mention AI name, ain't nobody gonna talk about the stuff he really was doing. Like, right. like you said, sending shoes to the prison and, Doing the stuff in the hood, I guarantee AI done spent millions of dollars. Oh, they don't never say nothing about that on the hood. But and the this ain't that. this ain't the millions of dollars that I'm talking about. He was doing stuff and getting the tax write off on and all that. I'm talking about cold cash that he was putting into hoods and places he was at, places he played, right. stuff like that that they would never talk about when you hear Allen Iverson name. But they always want to talk about all the other stuff. But he right. but I, he moves the culture. I think I think what's important to be said about that too is though like. Just like how you said Pac and Jay-Z, like, Jay needed Pac. Without Pac coming before him and doing all that, Jay ain't gonna know what not to do, and you know what I'm saying, yeah, what, how to sure, make them yeah. chess moves. Yeah. That's the same yeah. thing for LeBron. Like, LeBron yeah. get to look at big bro, AI, who embraced him on that journey too, and yeah. say like, all right, I could learn from right. all of these different things. Yeah, so nah, like, you know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Make them mistakes. Nah, yeah, you got yeah. to. Yeah, his his strat LeBron strategies though, like how, one of the best ones. The I've moves seen. he yeah. make, the exclusive moves he make, boy, he bad. Yeah. Like him and his crew. Nah, just from they the level bad, of, of like <laughs> from like, day one, he like the first thing you got to say about him is the decision, like, come on, bro. <laughs> like yeah. that that's what I did that was bogus was the decision. Like, that wasn't I wasn't even bogus. That, but that's yeah, what I'm saying. Like is, that's 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 shit. like the thing that he get criticized right, the yeah. most or get, you know what I'm saying? Like so yeah. like if that that's that what oh I'm cool. I am doing pretty good for like the status and the elite level he came in from day one on and like that's the big crowd about yeah. me. Like, nah, I'm cool. Nah, nah, definitely the way he handled himself and he conduct business, that's inspirational. I, I like yeah, it. That's definitely, yeah, that's definitely he moved the culture definitely with that. He he know how to do it, even with being political and stuff. Right. Cause the Jordans and the Kobe's you now wouldn't enter all that. For nah. him to be speaking, sometimes some of the stuff be kinda I don't know where he was coming with that one, but yeah, for him to even be steep yeah. speaking up and he the top on the list is yeah, yeah. Nah, he ain't brave. scared to throw his that's name dope. up there. If, you know what I'm saying? Somebody come back at him. You gotta respect that. Yeah, yeah for sure. But hey, we got this part where we we uh we we like to do called "What's Better Now" or in the '90s. So we just go. It's basically like everything in the '90s. Was see, he it. retro. Yeah. He, he, you see, he got the he got the NWA yeah. White Sox yeah, hat on. Right. He fall under that act. So you know, yeah. this is a good one for him. Even though most of his answers gonna probably be '90s. So. Straight up, what's better, the uh, haircuts in the '90s or now? Ah, uh, the '90s, '90s for sure. <laughs> So you can pick anyone, Gumbo, Pac had in Juice, right. Q had in Juice, that whole, yeah. <laughs> Nino. <laughs> Nino, yeah. Nino was crazy. AB yeah. brought that out one time, yeah. the Nino Brown, yeah. remember that? Yeah, facts, yeah, 90s for sure. Um, in the in the 90s, you like, or uh, what's better in the 90s or now, clothes, fashion? I think, see, I think people starting to dress more like the 90s now. It seemed like to me, the 90, I go 90s for sure. Yeah. I think I thought Nas was like the freshest dude in the '90s. Yeah, yeah, he was smoothing him up. Let me see. Uh, what's better now? I mean, uh, then or now? Uh, commercials back then in the '90s or now? I think '90s was more memorable. Like you know, what I'm saying like classic lines that like you would never forget. Like, you know what I, mean? <laughs> I agree. You can still quote like you know, what I'm saying commercials from the '90s now. Like you know, like Lil Penny, Lil Penny, yeah. Penny all the Jordan commercials. Jordan you know, commercials, man. commercials, yeah. Because now it's like so many commercials. Now it's like right. it's not. It's hard for them to really stick out. Every once in a while, like the Dos Equis, the original Dos, yeah, Dos, Equis, Dos Equis had a vibe. Yeah. They messed it up yeah. with the new dude, Dos right? Dos Equis, I think. Shit, that was remember when the fuck. What's the other one? Uh, Old Spice. No oh, man. Yeah. Old Spices was hilarious. I don't know, Always yeah. I, I, it might be a tie. The caveman. It's kind of like a tie. Yeah, they, yeah, it's, it's, that's that's yeah, a hard one. Yeah. The Geico's. All of the, <laughs> the Geico's is yeah, hilarious. Yeah. So it's kind of. Nah, yeah, yeah. When you think about it. Yeah, yeah it's kind of a hard one right yeah, there. That's but R&B music in the 90s or now? Oh, uh, 90s for sure. It ain't even yeah, no real R&B now. I don't know if I got to. You got to have a rapper on it. You got to have a stupid, crazy beat. I hate when they throw the rap on that now because the rap was so trash. Like back in the day, you had a you yeah. had a bad boy yeah. remix or the uh, yeah. so so dev remix. Right. But that was hard though. Right, you know right. It was different right. vibe. But now you know you throw 
Like Soldier Boy coming on, messing all of his sons up and shit. <laughs> nah, I don't want to say that. I don't want daughter to get on me on social yes. media. So. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do soldiers like that, man. Yeah. I love Soldier Boy, man. Nah, Don't do nah, soldiers like soldier, that, man. Yeah. Nah, but nineties for sure. R and B. You got everybody. One twelve, Mary J, Jodeci, Silk, H Town, it was yeah. Subway. It was hot. It was so, it was so many Subway, cold, you know what I'm saying? Boy. Everybody. It was cold. Nowadays you only got a few, you know what I'm saying? You got Chris Brown, Trey Sons. Yeah. Jack, it ain't, yeah. It ain't too Jack, many. Jacquees. What? Yeah, Jack Come on, yeah, he's tripping too. He disrespected my man. <laughs> he, he was tripping. Man. I like Jack Dog got hit. The dog got hit. Uh, <laughs> uh, what up? Keep sweating. Yeah, he's on Keep sweating. Keep sweating. Sweat. Keep sweat. Keep sweat. Keep sweat. Keep sweat. Like what's wrong with this kid? Yeah. What 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 was what was better in the in the night? And was it better in the nineties or now? Like uh, I don't know. What would you call them? Like like. What would we call like the boomerangs, the coming to America, the like the like black, black movies, movies. Like, yeah, black, black movies. movies. Oh, for sure, back then ain't too many like not like that, like the super super classic. Nah, yeah, like, like black movies now is more like watching like motherfucking uh, what's it now reality TV. Like when you watch This Christmas, like all them like damn they watching reality TV. Right. Like back then you had so many classics. Uh, <sighs> Black, yeah. like even even the ones you know you got you got classes then you got hood classes right like coming to America all them classes but you got the hood classics you know what I'm saying state property uh, yeah belly belly paid the full paid the full yeah yeah, yeah like paper that. soldiers right paper yeah New yeah. Jack City New Jack City Society, yeah. Menace, Menace, yeah. Yeah. yeah those is the those is the hood classes the, the boys you know you go in there the like you got, you got the Rotten Tomatoes and shit and then you be seeing like with the low score like that nah yeah, they, 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 they ain't yeah, accurate they, yeah. right yeah let's get out let us get little hood rate yeah, over. Yeah, they're gonna be about 98 percent you feel me yeah, acting ain't right on that yeah. before you play in games or one of the songs i know we listen to many over the years yeah. but one of the ones that was like yeah that's the one out i had to listen to every game to get me hyped and i know you you a throwback dude what is that song that you used to Man, listen to if i had to pick one that's you remember thing. that you were like Man, i always had to hear this before the game Man, I ain't gonna lie, man. I I think Bishens is a rider. The pop, that was my, my shit. Yeah. <laughs> so you used to get yeah, hype off that. Yeah, because yeah, you know you gotta you, get how you playing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's man. a real one. Yeah. Nah. What fact. was yours? Man, I had a few. One of the one of my favorites though that used to get me like dumb hype was the was, was that fifty. That many men. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. Can't go wrong with that. Many men give me hype, yeah. bro. I just I thought he was to, the coldest when that's he first how came out. That's how he first came yeah, out. You yeah, ain't yeah. care. He was right or wrong. You yeah. was rolling. Yeah, yeah, you had me with everybody. Yeah, had me with everybody. I hate y'all rule. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> this shit. And what was crazy, just like three months before that, I was bumping Ja Rule. Yeah, man. Right. Everybody yeah, was. It was just like, man, he took Ja Rule out my my rotation. Real talk. Real quick. That was amazing. That's a true story. I need to check out that documentary. The fire. I seen, right, I seen Ja Rule and, uh, when it. I was in New York. I seen Ja Rule and Irv yeah. Gotti, man. I spoke to them boys, man. They look like they in good health and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't them think I'm Irv Gotti got a pretty nice looking girlfriend. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Say he blessed. Yeah, though. he blessed. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he still blessed. doing good. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he overachieving, man. Yeah. <laughs> Top five um, albums of all time that. Rap, we'll go to rap albums right. yeah. of all it's, time. All right, man. It, it depends on when you ask you me. some of your favorites. Yeah, it's I, I got more than five because it, it just depends, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Midwest a, a different area. I, used, I ain't get on to East Coast rap until, like, I got a little older. Like, my uncle, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, that's who I looked up to, too. My uncle, he was, like, tough dude in the neighborhood, but... No, he was like all gangster rap. He yeah. was Scarface, Scarface, NWA, UGK, UGK. You know what I'm saying? A Ball, MJG, MJG Spice yeah, One. Yeah. Like he was just that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. MCA, MCA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, you know, so I grew DJ up. DJ Clue, DJ Clue, yeah. DJ I, Quick. I mean, that's what I meant. Yeah, DJ yeah, Quick. Clue. That was, Shout yeah, out Quick. Quick. That was my Shout first city Quick I bought. Was hard. That was a, I bought uh, Safe and Sound. DJ uh, Quick was my first album I bought on cassette tape. Uh, I was living in Grand Rapids. Me and my my, my mom took me and my brother. To, he bought uh, he bought I don't know what album was out at the time. It was I don't know if it was A Ball MJG like both of them or it was the A Ball Lost album. But he yeah. bought that and I bought the Safe and Sound DJ uh, Quick album. That was the first, I don't know why I bought yeah. that CD. I just like the cover and shit. <laughs> oh man, they just chance to go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I bought that shit, but man, I think my top five man. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go me against the world. I'm gonna go doggy style. Mm. Uncle Snoop. Whole lot of West yeah. Coast. I'm gonna go. 
I'm gonna go to Purple Tape. Mm. Only built for Cuban links. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Illmatic, and then my fifth. I'm gonna go. Damn, I ain't gonna lie. This is gonna be crazy, but I like that eight eight ball MJG first album it was so hard to me. So I don't know why it just had so many. I think it was the time. You know what I'm saying? But I was staying with my mom, and like just the music, everybody was playing. Like the whole time, the yeah. whole time was going on. Like. Everybody in the crib, you know how it is. Every million people in and out the house. They, they have house parties. They mm-hmm. they gambling. They playing cards. You know what I'm saying? You pretty much just there soaking up all. You looking at all this. I think at that time in, in the songs that was being played, like pimping my own rhyme yeah. and all that. I think I just gravitated towards what? that album a lot. Space yeah. Age, them. They yeah. had, they had, yeah. they had, man. Yeah. Eight ball them had Space some Age. Space Age pimping was, pimpin oh, was yeah. killer. Yeah, yeah. Blessing to have you come here with your busy schedule, man. But we definitely appreciate the love, Q. Rave about you, man. That's what made yeah. me start really. Yeah. Getting into you and following your career, so man, we definitely appreciate you coming through and messing with us, man. We yeah, man, we definitely, okay. man, appreciate yeah, you coming sure. through, bro. This love, bro, for real, for real. We do it like that. Knuckleheads podcast, fellas, check us out. Yeah.